their nickname was Rhino. And the other one I saw was uh, Solo. Okay, well, I don't know how I got that one. But Rhino was, uh, Earl Weaver called me Reineke. You didn't pronounce my name right. <laughs> okay. So then they, then they kind of shortened it and it became Rhino. Singleton might have been the only guy that called me Solo. So I, I don't know where he got it from. But uh, yeah, yeah, nobody else. They all called me Rhino. You know, you're like, of the eight people, there's a Gallant and Winfield were before you, and there's a couple guys who never made it to the major leagues. Um, and then your son's drafted. So I was wondering, like, how does that compare, like, the different excitement around being drafted and the attention and the hype in 73 versus when uh, I think Josh was the highest draft pick, wasn't he? You know, I, it's much more, actually, it's much more nerve-wracking really watching him. I think when I came around, you know, those draft years, 1973 and probably 390, there wasn't much money. Also, there wasn't much money for the major league players in those years. So there wasn't a lot of attention, you know, and there wasn't a lot of pampering, and treating with kid gloves, and pretty much riding the ticket that that first rounder. Today, in today's game, a first rounder will make it to the major league. It's just, it just fact, because the, uh, the teams that draft him do not want to look, you know, have people look down on them thinking that they made a mistake. Even if they don't earn it, they will make sure they get to the major league. It's kind of like protecting their investment. At least they can say, hey, see, he got to the big league. It's not right, but that's the way it is. In 1990, you had to earn it to go up to a different level. You had to perform, perform well in order to advance to the next level, you know, from A ball to double A, double A to triple A. Nowadays, you don't. Nowadays, they rush these kids through so fast. Uh, they, when they get up there, they don't really build the game as well. They are very talented, but it's pretty much we're moving them here to this state no matter how he does. We're moving them to this level no matter how he does, and then we're going to get to the big league. Now batting for Cornwall at Nova Temple Cornwall at Mill says number 16, Jesse Cameron. Oh, really? Why is he missing them? They're just fastballs. I'm a professional scout. We have two types. They have that type you're talking about that look at the high school and the college kids that are amateurs. And then there's the type that I am that those, we're watching and evaluate players that are already on professional teams. I, I watch the major leagues, I watch uh, AAA, AA, and A ball. I don't watch high school kids and I don't watch college kids. Every professional scout is, is given a coverage. Uh, so I have 20 teams that I cover throughout the summer and then again in the second half. And every player I see, I write a report on. And it, all it is is an evaluation report on his strengths and weaknesses. Am I interested in trading for him? So we can use that either for an advanced report or for an acquisition, you know, either uh, free agency, either minor leagues also have free agency, uh, you know, along with major leagues, but if you play six years in the minor league, you're free to go to another organization. The, your manager, Earl Weaver, is like remembered in, you know, by, for many things, and one of the things you remember is for the platoon system. The thing that strikes me when I look at the stats is that I think it was whatever year you hit 25 home runs, you hit like... 18 of them against righties, which kind of contradicts the whole pl platoon idea. So well, I'm glad you noticed that because with Earl Weaver, we didn't platoon. It's the wrong definition for it, isn't it? Exactly. And, and in fact, he even told me years ago when they were introducing us, he turned to me, you know, it was all the Orioles and the function, and he said, Gary, I didn't platoon you. And I said, I know, Earl. I said, I did that in 83 when you left. I, I didn't face any right hand. I faced just left-handers, and John Lowenstein just faced right-handers. That started in 1983. So you're, you're talking about 79, I hit 25, and I played a lot. You know, I batted, I batted seven, you know, and I was hurt a few times. Like, I got hit in the mouth opening day, so I missed the week of the season. Uh, I got hit another time, just another week. But I played, I played a lot, uh, you know, five out, of, five out of seven days, which is a lot more than a platoon guy. You know, the game is 
for the most majority of the players, it's a game of, of streaks. It's hot, cold, you know, peaks and valleys. You know, the good players have longer peaks than the normal players, shorter, you know, lower val- or, or higher valleys than the rest of the guys. But when you're on a roll, it doesn't matter who's pitching. You know, there's, you're doing something right. You're seeing the ball right. That's the time you want to play. I came up through the Expo system, and I worked under some great people, you know, learned how to play the game. Uh, I really was not, I was treated fairly, you know, but, but I was treated like everybody else. And that's what, what I think every single player would love to have, is that nobody has favorites. And nowadays, with a high draft pick, you have favorites. Um, in those years, we didn't have that. I, I worked just as hard as the guy that was drafted in the 50th round, and we were treated equally. And again, I had to prove myself to move to the next level. You know, if I didn't hit, that guy did, he goes up and I stay down. So, uh, you know, like you said, I did get my big chance. I don't know why I didn't get my chance at Baltimore and Aaron in Montreal. We brought in different managers, and somehow they didn't, they didn't think much of me. I had some great years with the Expos in the minor leagues. I was, you know, MVP one year. I could have been MVP another year. I my numbers. It just that when I got up there, I was not given an opportunity when I got to the big leagues. You know, we brought in the Charlie Foxes of the world. Uh, you know, like nobody cared for that guy. Um, we, uh, and, and Dick Williams came along, and I was just shuffled to the side. So, you know, those are the two guys that never gave me an opportunity. What was your favorite stadium to play in? And, and then second question is, is there one player, for whatever reason, whether it's the way he played or his, his uh, personality that, that you remember most? Uh, Kansas City. I love going there. Beautiful ballpark. And I played well, and I hit well. So that one kind of stands out. You know, I like going to Anaheim Stadium because all my family going up to the California, they got to see me play. So probably my favorite player to play against was George Brett. He's the best hitter I've ever played against. Another ballpark I really enjoyed going to, Milwaukee. You know, I can remember the 78, and I told this to, to Mr. Selig when I saw him, probably was first introduced to him several years ago. I said, I remember 78. We broke in three games against your club, and you scored 40 runs, and you killed us three straight games. <laughs> Bambi's Bombers, probably. Yes. Oh, what a lineup. <laughs> they have some great teams there. So. What comes to mind is like one of the better moments as a, in, your, in your career and one of the worst moments. Right. I tell everybody, the highlight of my career was 1979, beating the Angels in Anaheim. I had my family there, and then I got to go out and get my dad, who was big with my brother and I. You know, he pretty much taught us the game. I got to go out and bring him into our clubhouse had to celebrate with all of them. So that was the highlight of my, my career. And the other side, the low point? I think maybe a low point might have been leaving the Orioles and seeing the breakup, you know, how they, how that was mishandled, you know, after those, those great years we had. I was there 78 through 80, 85, but our 78 through 83 team, we were in a playoff hunt every single year. You know, the American League East, even in those years, gosh, it was good. Oh, yeah. You know, the Red, Red Sox and Yankees were always good. We were always good. You had Detroit that one year, and even before '84, they were good. Milwaukee was always good. Toronto was coming up. It was, you know, it really. And you only had you didn't have a wild card. No. You had to win your division. You don't want to get carried away like uh, like the other sports where you have a, you know both at least a third of the teams go to the playoffs. But you know when you play a long 162 grueling season and to have another team. That has a chance when you add another wild card, then you're talking another pennant race for several teams playing for something else. You get the fans more involved instead of just oh, packing it in wait till next year. I think that's a great thing. I think for me being a hitter, the science of hitting by Ted Williams, I don't think anybody can go wrong with that. And the one thing that, that sticks out, as one of the three things that he talks about, is know yourself, know your capabilities. 